Okay. Um, so I, I'll try not to, <laughs> I'll try to just sort of blaze through this um, uh, as best, as quickly as I can. Um, so basically I'm just going to try and give you a quick update on where things are with the, um, uh, with the e Jakarta E8 delivery. Um, there's a lot of activity. Um, if you're subscribed to any mailing lists or um, uh, or watching any GitHub projects, I'm sure you've seen you know a, a some smattering of uh, discourse um, going back and forth. Um, it certainly has ramped up in the past several weeks, so um, it's good, great to see all that progress. Um, the the just to sort of get us back to where we were last month, right? The deliverables for Jakarta E8 haven't changed at all, right? We're still uh, planning to deliver a complete set of Jakarta E8 specifications. Um, and th these will each consist of um, a specification document. I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. The, uh, a new API release, which is um, programmatically will be unchanged from what we did uh, with the, um, the, the the Java E8 release. Um, uh, it will include uh, a new T. So, so it's a new API um, with that's um, licensed under Eclipse uh, EPL and uh, using uh, all the Eclipse development process. We'll have TCKs that are um, uh, where we have produced to essentially make the same collection of. Um, uh, tests that we used in um, uh, Java E releases, but now they're um, uh, they're they're testing for um, compatibility with Jakarta E, um, and um, we're uh, essentially introducing this new component, this new idea about uh, what's called a compatible implementation. Uh, and so, and that uh, again, I'll I'll talk a little. <laughs> I think I'll talk a little bit about that in the uh, following slide. Um, so the specification process, uh, this is following the, the Eclipse Foundation specification process. You might see that, that as um, uh, abbreviated EFSP, Eclipse Foundation, yeah. And um, uh, one thing is there's a brand new version that was just ratified uh, and is, I think it's posted on the uh, Eclipse specifications project. Um, and then uh, along with that, um, We've also done a rev on the uh, Jakarta EE specification process. So what the way Eclipse uh, makes this work is there's a sort of a master process. The, it's the Eclipse Foundation specification process. Uh, and then there's a, um, uh, then each specification um, project um, can uh, add their own sort of um, special nuances to the overall process. All right, so uh, we've just ratified a new version of that. Um, I don't think it, it wasn't posted yesterday. Uh, it's probably gonna get up, be put up pretty real soon. Um, but I put some, uh, put a link in it. They, both of these links have not changed from what they were before. Uh, I have them in a web page, but you know, in the interest of time, I'll just sort of skip that for now. And um, I think the, uh, the main thing, the least <laughs> as the sort of, um, you know, worried about trying to get this out on time. The main thing that's updated in the new Jakarta EE specification is we've dropped the uh, minimum uh, ballot period from 30 days to two weeks. So that should give us a little bit of breathing time. On this project. Um, Okay, so the specifications, our goal is if you have a Java E8 implementation, you should be able to just um, uh, unpack the, uh, the new TCKs and run them in exactly the same way you ran them before, and you should be able to um, achieve a, uh, a compatibility, uh, a, you know, a, a compatibility um, test output that matches what you had in, in Java E8. Um, that's a key, a key uh, um, goal of this release. Um, Let's see, we have finished revive it, revising all of the, um, uh, the specification projects. So now there, if you go and look at the uh, specifications, um, oh great, that's gonna open on the wrong window. So, all right, hang on. Um, so uh, when you look at the EE4J um, uh, top level project page, uh, over here on the right side, you see a whole bunch of um, uh, uh, new prod, well, 
many projects are here. Uh, a lot of them has changed names and essentially everything that starts with Jakarta is now, uh, I think that's a, a pretty good metric here, um, is now a uh, an API specification project. And this, these will all, these all constitute the, um, uh, the, the sort of the collection of, um, uh, of uh, Jakarta EE APIs. They are, um, and every one of them uh, is stayed poised and ready for a release that's, oops, that's um, gonna come up. Um, and our target date is still the same, September 10th, right? Um, in these slides, and I'll put the, uh, I'll send, I'll push, post these to the same place we had posted them last month. Um, we will be creating um, um, ballot submissions. The, uh, the, the intent is to use the um, uh, GitHub uh, pull requests to, uh, to um, as a way of uh, um, submitting them and then tracking the approvals. Uh, and I listed a couple of, um, uh, I, I list a couple of these pull requests here just so we, you know, so uh, if you want to, uh, if you're interested in sort of voyeurism and you just want to watch these projects, you could just watch this project, Jakarta EE slash specifications. Uh, just look for pull requests. Um, and over time, you'll see more and more of the specifications themselves show up here. And you can, um, you can actually open any one of these. And each of them has this nice, um, collection of um, uh, uh, of check boxes all of those need to be um, satisfied uh, and when they're all checked off I think they believe that that means that that specification has been proved um, we have a the, I mentioned the Jakarta EE8 TCKs so from a test perspective these are identical to what used to be licensed to Java EE licensees um, and um, those TCKs are um, all Running right now, we have um, uh, we have essentially have the same level of um, uh, 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 of um, operational you know uh, reliability as we had with um, uh, with Java EE, uh, except that they're now all open sourced, um, and you can um, you could download the test versions. Um, uh, they're available right now, uh, or you can um, uh, once they're a part approved as part of the specification process, there'll be a um, uh, a Eclipse Foundation specification license version for people that want to uh, use the, you know, to seek an official Jakarta EE um, uh, 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 branding. Um, uh, sorry, I'm not, not running my computer correctly. All right, so we've done a lot with the TCK setup. Um, many of the API projects are now are busy incorporating TCK um, test jobs in directly into their Jakarta EE processes. Uh, I've listed a couple of um, uh, of the um, um, pull requests that uh, people I've, are using um, to to sort of document how these things are integrated. Um, Jan Sapol out of um, our Prague office has been. Um, um, instrumental in trying to get these set up. Um, uh, I think we've got Pyaris created several of these uh, running in there in projects that they're leaders on. IBM has created several of these that are running lead on. Um, and I, I don't mean, uh, if I didn't mention your organization, that doesn't mean anything. It's just those were the two that I uh, could think of right away. So if you want to watch things, right, um, I would say Start with um, uh, github.com, the, the main project, and pick an API project that you're interested in and you know, use the GitHub uh, watch button. Um, uh, there's an awful lot of um, back and forth discussion that goes along uh, that's associated with the pull requests and with issues. Um, there are, there's a giant collection of mailing lists um, that are available on uh, available from Eclipse. The thing is that the you know the the data from those two don't really intermingle. So if you want the full view, you may need to subscribe to both for the projects that you're interested in. Um, and if uh, and then uh, you want to watch these PRs uh, pull requests to the, the GitHub Jakarta EE specifications project. That's where you'll see uh, the specifications um, flowing in. All right, and I'm now at my deadline. So um, just continue to remind people, if you, um, 
if you are interested in contributing to um, Jakarta EE, you don't need to be a developer. There's an awful lot of writing uh, level things, right? We still have to get websites created for most of these projects. Uh, we have a template and a, um, uh, a mechanism in place for, so for rolling up all that, uh, all of the websites, but we do need people to, to uh, that are, that have some skills with them um, setting up web websites and, and maybe, you know, can either write text for them or maybe can write them, you know, can put them into, um, uh, into uh, um, markdown f uh, flavored pages. Um, we can certainly use help for all of that. Um, the the set of steps for for um joining up a project is the same as it was you know as it's been i think with eclipse for years right right you um anyone can subscribe to the mailing list um you can always follow all the projects and the activity that's going on you don't have to have anything to follow github projects except the github id if you want to make a commit uh, or submit a pr you do need to um create a, an Eclipse account and um, uh, and you'll also need an Eclipse account if you want to get email. So um, I see there was some stuff in chat. I, I didn't have time to read it, um, but uh, I think that's all that I, oh, that's all the slides I have. Uh, any questions about that? I'm sorry, it was kind of a whirlwind. No, that was great. And um, I don't see any um, questions in chat relevant to the presentation that you made. So. Um, if you want to have some questions now, or maybe we can, we have a, a, enough time at the end of the, um, all the presentations for questions from the audience. So for developers, people that are working on the contributions, I think the crucial thing to, um, you know, to, to understand is we, um, you know, it, it may seem like some of the, you know, delivery requirements are kind of, um, um arduous or how can we get them done but you know we're, we're seeing a lot of evidence that you know the it's it's straightforward enough to create all the um uh all the documents that are required um i think i mentioned earlier something about um the uh, specification documents um in this initial round we're basically just relying on the collection of a, a sort of a framing document, which, you know, it, it's replacing what used to be the, the detailed specification, uh, and then a reference to, uh, you know, the, the specification itself will include the Java docs. So the APIs, the, the details about how to use the APIs uh, will be uh, only in the Java docs in this release, uh, and in subsequent releases, um, we will start to, to be able to uh, bring forward the uh, the detailed specification documents that we had in previous releases that it's taking that that um, securing all of the permissions and legalese um, for uh, for the 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 text from all those um, previous uh, specifications has turned out to be a little more challenging than we anticipated so Investigations has turned out to be a little more challenging than we and don't, it's not available. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ed. Sure. Um, Scott, are you around? Yep. Okay, perfect. Can you see your screen? Yep, we can, thank you. Okay, so just giving a quick quick update on what the specification committee has been up to the past or since our last call the past month and primarily the focus has been on defining the TCK process updating or def filling out a um, Jakarta EE specification process guide and operation of the spec committee and then focus on what does that actually imply for API projects in the Jakarta EE8 release so we'll take a quick look at those Three things. Um, so we just last last week we released the initial version one of the TCK process and announced it to the specification leads list. You can find that document here in the public uh, public drive of the specification committee. The highlights were that we defined the materials for a TCK release, which Ed talked about in his presentation. We defined a process to uh, challenge TCK tests, and then we defined uh, a, a process to define or to 
claim compatibility uh, for certified implementations. In the Jess Ops Guide, we also made that initial draft version. It's not finalized, but it has most of the content that you need to move forward uh, last week as well. Again, announced on the spec lead list, and the link is here. Um, the highlights that we defined a number of the operations of the spec committee in terms of votes and how reviews, uh, specific, uh, spec release reviews were, were done, and in particular, what that meant from the perspective of a, a specification project and what it needed to do, you know, in, in terms of the actual details. <clears throat> and there's a one page wiki that tries to collapse all that information together that's listed here about how to prepare API projects should be actually four Jakarta E8 releases. Um, that's been updated to reflect those changes in the TCK and Jess Ops Guide. Uh, it's a living document that we're, we've been updating pretty much on a daily basis as projects are going through this process and we're you know, discussing issues that are run into um, on, the, on the spec leads and platform development mailing lists. If you have questions about that, then definitely get on the spec leads list and, uh, and, and send those in. Or if, if, you're not, if you're not a lead and you still have a question because you're involved in the project, uh, probably send it to the, either get your lead to do it or send it to the, the public spec committee list. And that's pretty much what we've accomplished so far. Thank you, Scott. Do we have David around? Yeah, I can see David's here. Yeah, we're burning through our agenda pretty quickly here, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is unheard of. We might actually be able to talk to people during these calls. I know. Okay, uh, so uh, good thing I'm a little long-winded, I guess. Um, let me see if I can go ahead and share. All right, does everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay, so the, uh, the you know, the Jakarta E to uh, JavaX transition uh, conversation has largely died down in the community, but uh, I do think there's an important aspect that we're missing in the conversation uh, because we've become, you know, focused on, on big bang versus incremental, but you know, it's important to remember that in the definition of Big Bang, there is still the option for us not to move everything. Uh, and there are really good reasons to do that. Um, and that, that, that's an important conversation to have. That comes for free in the incremental perspective. But if you have a Big Bang mindset, you still need to keep in mind some aspects that people have that are issues that we can address by not moving everything. One is that you know we know there's a cost to legacy like there's a lot of stuff that people don't even know about that they don't use uh and and the quote i don't need that is a very big uh, thing that people like to throw at job ee uh now jacardi ee so you know just because something is there do, do we need to actually refresh it and move it into the jacarda namespace or is it fine living forever the rest of its days in Java X. The other aspect is size. People will often say things like Java EE is too big. This is our opportunity to address that kind of concept and you know, maybe some things just stay where they are. And the other important thing to remember is that just because we don't move it to Jakarta doesn't mean it's dead. It means we just don't see any reason that it needs to evolve and it can continue to run just fine under Java X. Uh, and so just because something doesn't move doesn't mean you can't use it anymore. It means you're not going to have to invest in actually updating that code if it's old and fine and doesn't need to be messed with. So to, to make this you know, kind of a more pragmatic conversation, I just wanted to highlight four specifications that, that make this converse, the necessity for this conversation 
far more obvious. Okay, so the first one is JavaX Enterprise Deploy. It's a package. Uh, it was created in 2000. It was proposed in 2000 and released in 2002. And it never moved beyond 1.0. Okay, it was, its point was to try and create a standard way to deploy into a Java EE platform. Uh, and it never really took off beyond its usage in the TCK itself. Uh, it doesn't support any kind of, you know, uh, no, no cloud platform support this. It's not used in any modern way. A modern perspective of this concept of doing a de standardized deployment API would involve some REST API, and it definitely would not look like the JavaX Enterprise Deploy package. Uh, the second aspect of it is it occupies a namespace that is largely, you know, uh, where CDI lives. Everything CDI lives under JavaX Enterprise, and there is JavaX Enterprise Deploy sitting there in with CDI going, hey, you don't mind if I uh, squat here for a while. The question is, do we want to move this specification from JavaX Enterprise into Jakarta Enterprise and still have it sitting there grabbing some land from CDI and the concurrency utilities, which is also under JavaX Enterprise concurrency. So, you know, that's an important aspect of the conversation. Um, if we were to do an actual enterprise deploy API, we would want support from cloud vendors. We would want to do it fresh. And, it, and if we move this legacy API into Jakarta Enterprise Deploy, what package would we use for the newer API? And how would we explain the difference to people? Well, the Jakarta Enterprise Deploy is all legacy, but the Jakarta Enterprise even better package is, uh, is the one you should be using. How do we tell people this? Another aspect of it is JavaX Management J2EE. This is JSR 77 proposed in 2000 and released in 2003. Not updated for 13 years, not even a maintenance revision in 13 years. Uh, it was a JMX based way to get stats from you know, uh, a, a Java E implementation. And uh, um, you know, a modern perspective on this would use a REST API uh, and it would look a lot like micro profile metrics, for example. You know, uh, is this something that we need to be migrating from Jakarta to, from JavaX to Jakarta? Is there enough value there that it's worth uh, explaining and talking about again, or do we just leave it where it is? Uh, another specification, which is, you know, definitely legacy, is uh, JSR 101, the, the Java XML RPC package. Proposed in 2000, released in 2002, uh, it largely ref reflects the industry's first attempt at SOAP services and was immediately deprecated uh, by JAX WS in 2005 and since is based, you know, that was 13 years ago. And JAX WS has been the dominant way to do SOAP for Java EE in the last you know, 13 years. If you're using SOAP in, uh, you know, in Java EE, it is probably JAX WS. If you have any old JAX RPC APIs, why would we want, what's the justification for us making you change that code, right? Is there a justification there? Uh, what value do we create for you by having us move that code and you have to spend effort in updating it? Uh, you know, you're not gonna be writing more applications in that. You're gonna be using JAXWS if you are using SOAP. So do we need to migrate this API or do we leave it calmly, fine, frozen the way it is? Uh, another and the fourth and last uh, API that I'm gonna talk about uh, is Java XML registry. This is JSR 93. It's also another very, very old API. Uh, it was only developed for a year and a half. So it was proposed in 2001, received a year and a half of our attention, released in 2003. And after that year and a half of initial push, it wasn't touched, not even for maintenance releases for 17 years. Uh, its goal was to try and create 
uh, an API that would allow tools uh, and us all to create an ecosystem around UDDI and things like that, which is basically a way to register SOAP services in a central location so they can be discovered and looked up. That industry never really formed and I argue that if there is any implementation of a tool out there that leverages this API, it is 17 years old and would likely be broken and forever lost if we were to migrate this API. So changing the package of this particular spec would likely result in the death of any implementations that are leveraging this. Uh, and so, you know, if we do think that this thing has any value, our best thing for it is probably to leave it where it is. Um, and so, you know, that is a, is a very critical data point. We can't just simply go, everything's got to be changed. So I, I think the, the summary of this is that big bang versus incremental is not the most important part of the discussion. Um, it is an important part of the discussion and the concept of big bang is we're not going to keep moving things over and over and over again for the next 20 years. We're going to make a decision now and we're going to stick to it. But that decision doesn't necessarily mean we have to or should move everything. We do have legacy we need to talk about. Um, so we need to audit each spec's relevance and figure out is this something that needs to uh, be expanded and improved in which case it should move into Jakarta or is it fine as it is and maybe we just leave it in Java X and it can still be part of the platform but we do not intend to migrate to update this thing ever. Uh, also you know people say Java EE is is large and too big if we don't want them saying that about Jakarta EE now is the time to address our size. Are there some things that we have control over that are specifications under Jacquard EE that maybe we just want to let them sit there and uh, slowly phase them out? In which case, if we plan to phase them out, we should definitely not move them to, to the Jakarta namespace because that's a land grab against the future of what we can do. Think of namespaces as domain names, right? They have value. Do we want to occupy the Jakarta namespace with a bunch of things we think are legacy and are not going anywhere? Or do we want to leave the Jakarta namespace for the things which are definitely relevant, even a little relevant and uh, you know, new things, but certain things that are very, very legacy and old, maybe they just stay there in, in the JavaX namespace and not move forward. So, uh, <clears throat> That's the summary of it. So, uh, you know, I, that's all I have prepared for this. I do believe that we need to facilitate this conversation better. When we get through the J Jakarta EE8 conversation, you know, deliverables, I'm sure we have to come back and spend some time here and actually talk about each specification. Uh, but but that's, uh, that's, the, that's the update right for now. Hey, David, uh, there are two questions in the chat. Sure. If you want to address them now. Um, I'm, it's difficult to read the chat when okay. you're screen sharing. Let me, yeah, uh, let me do that for you. So from John Klingon, mm -hmm. um, is the approach that you're recommending deprecating those four specs in Jakarta E8 and dropping them in Jakarta E9 um, and then common drop or make optional too? Um, I would recommend, we definitely do not, so uh, say that question again real just to make sure I did, got the, the first part of the sentence, the first sentence. So is the approach you're recommending deprecating those four specs in Jakarta E8 and dropping them in Jakarta E9? Um, I would definitely recommend deprecating uh, JavaX management J2EE uh, because it's not used anywhere, and Jacks R, you know, the, the last one we showed, uh, Jacks RPC is already deprecated, uh, and that's kind of a, a a good point to note is that because it's already deprecated, why would we move it to Jakarta? Um, and then that leaves the uh, JavaX Enterprise Deploy Package, and deprecating that is 
has always been impossible because the TCK uses it to do all the deploys. And so uh, we, you know, we could say it's deprecated, but in fact, we would all still have to support it until it's replaced. Um, so uh, three of the four, yes. And one of those is our, you know, one of those three is already deprecated and the fourth is not able to be deprecated. But I do believe that none of the four should be moved into the Jakarta namespace. They don't provide enough value to occupy, uh, you know, our future namespace. What was the second question? Um, so uh, let me now see uh, the, the the chat is now going on. And, and, and if people are on the call, you can go off mute yeah. and ask. Martin, do you want to um, uh, unmute and, and ask the questions? So there, there was also comments on the terminology, whether it, uh, to make, uh, you know, uh, dropping uh, uh, APIs or, or uh, make them optional or pruning. So this is, this is something that uh, definitely um, requires wider discussion and some more organized way of, of collecting input. Um, yeah. But Martin, um, did you wanna uh, jump in? Yeah, I can. Uh, so basically I'm asking, how would you suggest that we could audit each spec's relevance? I think, um, you know, there's 34 specifications, there's 34 packages, Java packages. And, um, you know, I think what we need to do is kind of divide and conquer, get people to write up. Uh, we, we need to do an analysis of how long it's been since some of these have changed. Um, I particularly, I would like to do a, a, a binary level analysis because in, in the JCP process, a lot of these things have received maintenance updates uh, to change text in the specification um, and things like that. But at a binary level, the API has stopped moving at a certain date. What is that date? Um, and so, you know, getting some help analyzing when was the last time we saw the method signature signatures of this API change. That's, that's an important thing to know. Uh, so what one of the things that could be done is to take these 34 packages that are under our control and, you know, do a, like a binary diff. Uh, did this thing change between, you know, Java EE8 and Java EE7, Java EE7 versus Java EE6, 5, 4, so on, and figure out, okay, well, this one hasn't been updated for 17 years. Is there any value in it anymore? It's, you know, doesn't matter if people are using it, but is there any value of it uh, to be, you know, moved in the, to the Jakarta namespace? So, you know, that would be something that if people are, if, if someone is willing to help do a binary diff, uh, let's coordinate on the Jakarta EE platform list and figure out how to get that done. We're collecting a lot of data there in the Jakarta EE platform, specific, you know, uh, project. On the namespace transition, there's a dependency tree that's there. People have contributed graphs based upon that dependency information. So I think this is a, this is a data point that we haven't collected that we do need to collect. Um, so that would be you know, one way to, to really get a, a new piece of information into this conversation that can help us all decide is this legacy or not. Yeah, thank you. I, I fully agree. Like these specs are like older than my career. So uh, some way how to like really separate this would be necessary. But I do, I think that this is orthogonal to the Big Bang versus incremental question. It, you're right. So Big Bang versus incremental. Um, Big Bang, you know, if, if we all decided tomorrow we're going to do Big Bang, if you look at the description of Big Bang, it says, okay, now the follow on discussion is, what do we want to migrate and what we want to leave there in Java X. And, and then obviously with incremental, uh, we're having the same conversation, uh, but we're having a conversation from uh, we want to change as little as possible from Java X to Jakarta. And Big Bang is sort of, we want to change as much as possible minus the things that are legacy. So they both involve the same conversation. Uh, and the conversation of 
it is orthogonal to Big Bang. And uh, even if you are thinking in a Big Bang or incremental way, you should still want to have this conversation because it's relevant to either. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks, David. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions immediately, then uh, uh, I'll take over to talk about uh, upcoming conferences we're working on. Um, let me just try to share my screen. So um, we are working on preparing um, uh, two conferences. So it's uh, 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 Jakarta One live stream. I hope you've heard about uh, that one in, in uh, last couple of months. And also EclipseCon Europe uh, 2019. So a um, little bit about Jakarta One live stream. So it is uh, going to be a virtual one day conference um, that is dedicated to uh, cloud native uh, topics and in particular Jakarta E, Java E micro profile. Uh, the date is the uh, September 10th, 2019. And um, I will show you the uh, website we're uh, continuously working on. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, it's, it's right now open for registration. We um, uh, basically want to uh, get a sense of, uh, um, uh, draw people's attention and get a sense of how many people uh, we will have uh, 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 dialing in on that day. Uh, we already had a, a call for papers and uh, uh, it was closed uh, uh, on the 15th, so this Monday. Um, we got around uh, uh, a little bit less than 50 talks and uh, the program committee is now reviewing those talks. Um, uh, what we plan to have is a combination of uh, keynote talks, demos, discussions, and uh, we're working on figuring out the schedule. Uh, and uh, uh, as soon as we have that, we will uh, publish it on the website as well. Um, of course, we will be tweeting and, and uh, asking for your help to spread the word. Uh, and uh, hopefully um, we will make this uh, event a, a success. So um, that, is, that is pretty much at this point um, everything I have to um, uh, share with regards to Jakarta E, uh, sorry, Jakarta One live stream. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that would be it. The second conference that we are working on is uh, EclipseCon Europe. Um, it is uh, scheduled uh, for October 21st to the 24th and it is in um, um, uh, Germany, Ludwigsburg. Um, we are going to have uh, the, uh, I will go to the website again and, and show you um, so here, here's the website and here are the details where, um, that you can find. We are uh, also now have a, a call for papers closed. Uh, so far, uh, this was the largest number of um, uh, talks uh, submissions in the area of the uh, cloud native. I'll just show you the cloud tracks. So um, it seems there, there, there is definitely a lot of interest, a lot of great talks uh, on this one as well. Um, so the um, invite is really for you to register and figure out the accommodations because, uh, um, you know, um, through the, um, in, in last few years, we, we are realizing it, 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 it sells out pretty quickly. Um, so uh, please uh, um, uh, jump on and, and register. Uh, I would also want to point out that we're working on uh, community uh, related events. So uh, we're going to work uh, um, and start working very shortly on Jakarta, or I should say, I should call it cloud native related community day and a community evening. Um, I believe we already uh, know the, 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 the date for um, the day for both. So community day is going to be Monday 
and then a uh, community evening is planned for Tuesday. So um, we already had some exchanges on Jakarta e mailing community mailing list and people are uh, eager and interested. Uh, very shortly, we are going to start uh, organizing those and, and uh, uh, this, uh, these community events will be um, community driven and uh, community organized. Of course, Eclipse Foundation will take part uh, in it. Um, but primarily this is a, a, a community um, days or events organized for the community. So um, your feedback and input uh, uh, will be uh, um, essential here. Um, that is everything I have for the conferences. Any questions or comments? Okay, so if nothing on the conferences, um, I am hoping that uh, we can take uh, uh, the rest of the time for other questions. Uh, we have people, not just uh, people who um, have presented, but uh, other people um, very much involved in the uh, Jakarta working group and, and various committees. So um, we're welcoming questions and discussions on any of the topics. Nothing? Uh, Let me just quickly see the chat if there are some questions. I don't think we had any there. Hello, Tonya, this is Edwin. Hey, Edwin. Hi, uh, I have maybe a question about uh, Eclipse Con now there is time. Um, what if I register and then uh, later get accepted as a speaker? So, um, I don't know the exact answer, but uh, if that happens, then we'll, um, um, you know, you, you can contact us. To start with, you can contact me uh, and we'll figure it out. Okay, so that will be great, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Okay, thanks. No problem. I have a question for people if no one has any questions. Please, it go ahead. It, do people, is there something in particular that people would like to see in this call uh, that you think maybe isn't getting discussed or covered? You know, silence doesn't mean that we're happy. And once again, this is Amelia, everyone. Some users also here. When I see people being silent, it means, or there are no brains available, to provide valuable feedback, or we're just so not care enough that we're like, just run with the flow. What's going to be, or is something else, guys? Come on, let's do better. <clears throat> Hi, this is Scott Marlowe. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, hey, we great. can hear you. Um, so, you know, one, one thing that I'm concerned about uh, might come later with Jihad or EE9. Um, whether we do incremental or big bang. And I don't, I don't, you know, recall seeing this discussed much. Um, a, an, an additional wave, I guess, is, you know, when, when, um, when we uh, switch over to the new, you know, Jakarta namespace, and there are maybe third party, uh, um, um, artifacts and or you know, applications out there that are sort of looking at the transition from Java X to Jakarta um, namespace and maybe some of these are I don't know some of the you know some things that we all use um, it just yeah you know, it's going to be you know some of the friction will be some of these projects let's just say I don't know Eclipse link or hibernate or other other ones um, yeah, you know, we'll have some difficulty because it's sort of like a fork for them, and they want to continue with the Jakarta EE8 namespace, and also move into you know, in, you know incrementally forward, either Big Bang or incremental um, with this other fork. But yeah, you know, it's it, it you know it it 
it's kind of yeah it could could be like an additional wave of you know that impacts um, um, things out of the con control of what we've been talking about so I don't yeah it's a, it's a concern I don't think we need an action plan per se but if there is one way that helps that more than the other um, I'm not sure I mean incremental has less impact I guess but uh, but from the point of view of these third party uh, jars yeah I I don't really know what you know, which is better and if others have opinions on that I'd be interested Yeah, I, I know that I was trying to give a little space for other people to chime in before uh, I came bubbling in. Uh, I, I know that like there's going, to, you're right, there's going to be impact on communities around the Jakarta E community. There's going to be impact in the spring community. It's going to be impact in Drop Wizard. Uh, and basically anybody who uses these types of APIs uh, in their, you know, competitive platform. Right. There's a lot of people who have platforms that are kind of competitors to Jakarta E in a lot of way, but they still use it, some some of the APIs that are developed under the Jakarta E umbrella, uh, former Java E umbrella, and they're going to be impacted. And you 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 hit the nail on the head when you said the word fork because they may decide not to migrate to the new API and. Uh, you know what happens then right and that does kind of raise a question of uh, of you know what do we what do we collectively want to do now obviously they don't have to migrate it doesn't mean anything to us particularly if they don't migrate uh, we know we are going to have to write, create migration tools regardless um, and so you know that's up to them um, you know, it is an aspect uh, of all of the puzzle, and I would really like to hear from those people in this discussion. I, I have a little bit of uh, nervous energy that we're only hearing from the Jakarta EE people, like the true Jakarta EE people, and we need to be hearing from like the whole industry. So I, I would like to hear more voices in the discussion that we're having around the namespace because we're not the only ones affected. Uh, David, a question? Yep, go ahead. Um, like you said, we are going to prune, drop, remove, uh, or deprecate some obsolete specifications from the platform. That will uh, mean that we break Packers compatibility, right? Well, so uh, I want to be clear that the uh, maybe we need to introduce a new word. I used freeze. So there is the opportunity that it stays in the platform and is supported, it's just simply still in the JavaX namespace. So we do have the option to take specifications, leave them in the full profile. They're just not going to be migrated from JavaX to Jakarta. That's an option, right? So in which case, we're not breaking any backwards compatibility. The backwards compatibility of them stays, and we simply don't have any back, any, com, you know, any um, compatibility tool requirements for those legacy APIs, if you follow me. Yes, I do. Yeah, um, so go ahead. That also means then, uh, if you're talking about profiles again, um, in the full profile, if they use obsolete specifications, that we all, always drag them, all, drag them along, right? So if they stay in the full profile, that's, for example, all the uh, application servers that are going to migrate with the evolution of the platform have to drag these along. So is that a, I don't know if that's going to be a problem. I don't think the discussion about uh, Java E or Jakarta E is big or not because Spring Framework is also big. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a problem, but when will be the point that we can decide in a nice way 
to drop things that we really don't use anymore in, anymore in new applications and still right. can support the old ones. So maybe profiles uh, is the answer, but. Yeah, so um, the concept of actually deprecating thing is somewhat orthogonal to the do we move it or not um, concept, but, but just to address how we've handled deprecation in the past is typically, uh, it's it, you know it's made optional, and the platforms that you know have customers using that old API will typically still support it, and others who don't will often drop it. Um, and so, uh, you know, Jack's RPC and CMP are two examples that were made optional uh, in the last version of Java EE, and. Uh, <clears throat> And I think we have some typing going on there, so if we, maybe everybody could mute. But uh, anyway, so CMP and Jax RPC were made optional. Um, for example, uh, on the OpenEJB side of the fence in Apache, we still support CMP because we wrote our CMP implementation on top of JPA, so there isn't really any legacy there for us to get rid of. Um, but yeah, we, you know. In Jakarta E9 and 10, we could continue to make more things optional, which is a slightly different topic than should the namespace be migrated or not. Yeah, true. Thank you. So as we're, we're approaching, uh, we we'll probably can squeeze another question, but as we're to approaching top of the hour, I just want to uh, invite people to um, use the document that Amelia started and leave suggestions in that document how we can improve this meeting. Um, you can also leave uh, um, questions that uh, um, you would like to be answered. Um, but we would appreciate if, if uh, um, and maybe that will be easier way to collect feedback after each meeting to um, invite people to, um, to actually let us know um, how we can improve the calls. I will, um, because John Klingen is on vacation and also um, not able to speak, I will ask his question. Java EE9 thoughts and plans, because we're working in Java 8 before um, Eclipse, and um, what's going on with that? That is his question. So do we have any... Um answers or comments on that one? Okay, so we can definitely use that one for our um, next call. Uh, yeah. there, there are some uh, thoughts about what's going to be in Jakarta E9 in the GitHub space. So maybe if anyone is interested, you can look there for uh, for starters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess I would add that the JAXRS community is definitely doing work. Um, and so there's probably a handful of communities out there that are actively working on the next revision of their spec, maybe like three, two, three range. Uh, I know there are a lot of ideas uh, on what could happen, but I think everyone's so focused right now on Jakarta EE8 getting that out the door that it's a little bit difficult to to <clears throat> to think about uh, EE9. We were thinking about EE9 like a month and a half ago, but like this week uh, and next, we have to get all 34 specifications up for vote <laughs> and make all the all the namespace all the branding changes that are required. Uh, and so everyone's basically heads down. Um, but I think maybe next month or, or the month after that, you know, it's probably the great time to start talking about uh, what do we want to do for Jakarta E9. So eight will be out the door within the next two months here, hopefully, so, or before September, in September. Yeah, it has to, right? Yeah, right. So. Basically, we'll be having this conversation in a full swing and sometime in September. I'm looking okay. forward to it. 
So as we're at the top of the hour, um, uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining and participating, and we'll talk again next month. Thank you, Tanya. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thanks, bye. Check out the status of the CQs. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.